In this movie, I'll show you a number of small improvements in interaction and display in Alias 2011. I'll start with the interaction improvements. First, on the 3D window navigation bar, the twist and azimuth tools have changed to be more predictable. Also on the nav bar, the non-proportional view has a new workflow, and this also applies to the same tools on the view palette. The dolly tool has a new mouse movement to specify the zoom, and toggle visibility has become a permanent tool instead of a plug-in. And finally, the point of interest can now be set on a shaded model with no wireframe displayed. And there's two improvements in the display. Firstly, the curve curvature now works on symmetric geometry. And second, the continuity display has been improved. I'll now show you all these changes on a couple of example projects, starting with this handset. If I turn the grid on for the handset model, you can see that it's been built lying on the ground plane, and that the tumbling is oriented around the z-axis. So it's tricky for me to control the view if I want to see it in a different orientation. And this is when I would use the view twist and the azimuth and elevation tools. View twist turns the view in the viewing plane. If I drag one full screen width to the left, I get 360 degrees of rotation clockwise and back again I get a full rotation the other way. The azimuth elevation tool turns the camera by 180 degrees, so I can view the back of the product and then the front again. If I drag the full vertical distance on the screen, I still get a consistent movement of 180 degrees. And this consistency is carried over into different window sizes. If I have a smaller window, the azimuth tool is still rotating exactly 180 degrees. Even if I have a completely different proportion for the window, I still get a consistent 180 degrees when I drag the mouse the full screen width. And it's this predictability that's the main improvement in both the twist and the azimuth elevation tools. The next change is in the visibility tools. If I toggle my wireframe back on and select only the top component, I can make it invisible and then I can use the new toggle visibility tool to switch between the visible and the invisible objects. If I now make them all visible again, this time I'll use the pick component tool to pick the surfaces rather than the grouped objects. And the toggle visibility now works in the same way, toggling between the visible and the invisible surfaces. And this had always been a problem with the old plug-in version of the tool, which has now been fixed in Alias 2011. I'll switch to this larger model now to show you the changes in the view palette. And I'll start in the top view. Firstly, the dolly tool has now changed so that you click from corner to corner to specify what fits in the screen. It used to be from the centre to the corner, which was less intuitive. Secondly, the non-proportional view tool previously worked by dragging the middle and the right mouse buttons to squash and stretch and compress the view. It's used to analyse large, long models like this. But now, in the control window for the general preferences, in the viewing section, there's a new option to use a box-style workflow instead. Now, I simply drag a box, and the geometry within it gets reproportioned to fill the window. And if I want to get closer, I simply drag another box. And now I can clearly see that I have an unwanted wobble in my surfaces that I hadn't seen before. And I can only really spot this in the distorted view. Back in the normal view, it's almost impossible to see. The same choice of input method applies to the shortcut tools in the view navbar. And these now also work in the perspective view, as well as the isometric and orthogonal views. So here I can look at the same area and try to work out where the problem is in the perspective view.
This new box workflow will be set as the default, but if you prefer the old way of working, you can simply choose that instead in the General Preferences. Next, the Curve Curvature tool. If I compare the curvature plot in Alias 2010 to 2011, it now displays fully on the mirrored geometry. Also, the radius settings in the option window have been turned off by default instead of on, making my view less cluttered. So now I get much better visual feedback when I'm trying to balance a curve across the center line. And now the surface continuity locator has an improved display. You can see that the green line at the top is thinner and clearer and on the yellow line at the bottom, the display for flat curvature has been simplified. And finally, I'll go back to the boat model to show you how the point of interest behaviour has been enhanced. The point of interest sets the centre of the tumbling when you're viewing the model. And previously, you would have to click on the wireframe to reposition the point of interest. But now, if I'm using the new face selection options, I can also set it in the shaded view by just clicking on the surface that I want to position it on. And this is really useful for design presentation when you don't want your audience to be distracted by the wireframe, but you still want to be able to control the view. So to recap, the twist and the azimuth tools are now more consistent and you have a choice of workflows for scaling the view. Toggle visibility now works better and is a permanent tool on the menu. And there's an improved box workflow which is used for the dolly tool as well as the non-proportional scale. The surface continuity and the curve curvature tools now have a better display. And finally the point of interest now works really well in a shaded presentation.